Hello, and welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. I'm very excited today to um, have a guest instructor teaching me a little bit of how he paints. And his name is Kyle Lee from Kyle Lee Studios in Jasper, Florida, and I'd like to welcome Kyle to the show. Thank you, happy to be here. Great, so um, today I'll just start off by saying we're using um, a Sunbelt Manufacturing canvas from Sunbelt Manufacturing that Kyle uh, loves to use. We're using a Gamblin oil paint and Gamblin was nice enough to sponsor us today and send us a whole lot of paint to paint uh, this painting with. And um, I'm going to have just uh, Kyle get started and we are using the uh, Wilson Bickford signature brushes and palettes. So go ahead, Kyle. Sounds great. Okay, today we're gonna to make a nice little mountain scene with some, with a big tree and some rolling mountains. Should be a okay. pretty nice little painting. Very good. So we're gonna start off with some titanium white and a touch of Prussian blue. Alrighty, and we're using our uh, number one scenery brush. Number one scenery brush. Okay, there we go, a little bit of Prussian blue. Load that blue. up pretty good. Alrighty. Well, I'm going to come up here in the corner and we're just going to make little egg strokes. Okie dokie. Little just like strokes. this. So Kyle was uh, kind enough to uh, come on my show and he drove all the way with his lovely wife Michelle from Jasper, Florida. Jasper, the big old town of Jasper. So tell, tell us a little bit about Jasper. It's a, it's a little town. Um, three red lights. <laughs> I would say about 2,500 people in the city limits. Wow. Everyone knows everybody. You go down to the local grocery store and you can spend two hours from talking to everybody because uh -huh. everyone knows everybody. Very nice. It's a nice little town. A far drive from New Jersey. Yeah, it took us about 16 hours to get here. Well, I'm so glad that you came today to share your skills with us. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be here. And um, I don't fly. No. <laughs> uh, I just haven't been able to bring myself to get on a plane yet. Oh, maybe next time. Maybe next time. <laughs> All right, very good. So we got some blue up there. Yeah, we just want to fade it down. Okay. We want to put a nice little mountain in front of this. Okay. We just want to fade it down and then go back across the sky so you can Okay. kind of just blend everything together. And of course you can make it as dark or as light as you want. That's right. And, I and that's about that. Very good. Now we're going to take our filbert brush just to lay in the outline of uh, the mountain. Okay. So we'll take that same blue light color all right. And we'll add just a touch of red to it to make a type of purple. A little like bit a of purple. Like a light purple. I'm going to move yeah. my palette in the front here. Like a light purple. A light. I love purple. Oh, there that's we my go. favorite color. And I see you have your shirt on from your studio. And yeah, I love purple. <laughs> that's my favorite color. Kyle's studio is, is uh, Kyle Lee's studio on Facebook, right? That's Did correct. I say that right? Yep. You and said it anybody just can fine. come and. Take a peek at his work. I well, sure can. Very good. And hopefully you'll be doing more classes soon. All righty. Oh, you can keep going, Kyle. As I'm having a little get trouble that, getting that color. No, you're okay. <laughs> as soon as we get that, that back mountain in, we'll come in with a little bit uh, more blue. Okay. Just a shade darker. Okay. A little bit more red, just a shade darker. All righty. And we'll put us a mountain in right about here. So a couple, couple inches down. Yeah, we'll, kinda... we'll just drop it in and then we'll make us another little mountain right here. Okay. Coming up this way. And yeah. then as we get on into the painting, we're going to have a little foreground right about here. Okay, so we're just doing a little Comes bit down. of a sketch kind of. Yeah, putting, we're just putting in a little bit of. It does help to sketch it out. A little bit of sketch there so we can yeah. see which way we're going. See which way we're going. Very good. And now we'll go back to our one inch landscape brush. Okay. Get a little bit more red. And I got a little hair there. We want a nice purple color. Alrighty. And we'll just start putting in this back mountain. Okay. Just kind of scrub it in. About like that. Oh, I'm finally getting a little purple color. There we go. As we get closer to the mountains, uh, the top line of the mountain, We'll do that with a filbert brush because we don't want to go back into the sky. So you mean to neaten that up a little to bit in the back there? To neaten it up, there. to clean it up, yeah. Very good. I have a little red in mine. I like the way that looks with yeah, a little bit well, of red what show, you, showing through there. What you can do in the original painting, and it's what I did when I was teaching my classes, I would just go into like a little bit of blue, not much, uh -huh. with a little bit of white on it, and I would just like swirl this around. and oh. It gives like indications of... Trees and dips and valleys in the mountain and different things like that. Okay. 
You have to blend it out with your your brush, your uh, mop brush or a hag brush. Just a nice soft rabbit fur brush. Okay. And we'll just neaten up that mountain line in the background like this. Alrighty. And just have it kind of coming up and down a little yeah, bit, just whatever. Just, just wiggle it. Wiggle your, your fan brush so you can... You don't want just a straight mountain ridge. Right. They're, they're rare. So have it come up and down a little bit. Yeah, and something like that. Very good. And, and I see you put a little bit of blue. I'm sorry. You put yeah, a little bit a of... a little bit of blue. A little bit of more blue in here. A little bit of blue. We'll get a little bit more of that red to make our mountain a little bit more purple color. Okay. A little bit more blue. Because you have two different, you have several different colors of blue. More toward the blue side, more toward the red side. Okay. We want this one more toward the blue side, but we still want a little bit of red in it. And then we'll just start putting this one in. Oh, okay. A little okay. bit darker. Back little to black, the... A little bit of black. Oh, a little bit of black, a little bit of blue, a little, little bit of blue. white. Yeah. I, I paint according to my eye. What my eye tells me to mix is what I mix. Okay. So if I think it needs to be a little bit darker, I'll put black in it. And did you say you put a little red in there or just a just little, little black little, and blue? Just a little red. You did put a little tiny bit? Yeah, okay. just a little red. There we go. So just a shade or a value darker than the back at least. Oops, I'm on the wrong side. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay? Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. So as long as it stands out from that back mountain, mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to do that's right, right now. That's right. We want to separate the layers in this painting. Right. Okay. So we just can go back and forth and yeah, we could just mix go the back color as we're going. and Mix color as we're going. This is a really good way to train your eye how to mix colors. Yes. You know, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different color of paints uh -huh. on the market that you can buy. And if that's how you like to paint, then that's how you like to paint. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no wrong way of painting. Right. It's, how, it's whatever the person who's painting it, that's whatever they want to do. Exactly. But if you want to learn how to mix colors and you want to learn color tones and color hues, uh -huh. then you need to get a limited palette and then practice. Right. That's how you and I did. You know, we exactly. started off and we, we just, there's been times when I first started painting that I would get a canvas and just mix colors on it. Very good. And you just started painting not that long ago, right, Kyle? Yeah, about, well, this, the end of this December will be a year. Wow, wonderful. Yeah, I was really blessed. And it's nice that you are selling your paintings, too, now. Yeah, I sell the paintings. Wonderful. Um, sometimes people ask me to paint a specific thing, and I'll paint it for them. Oh, so you do some commissions, too, already? Oh, yeah. Wow, that's wonderful. It's, you know, I've been really blessed. The Lord is Very really nice. Me when it comes Off to, to this, a good start. It's painting stuff now. Very good. I mean, I've always been able to draw. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could draw anything. Very People, nice. horses, you know, it, it doesn't matter. I could draw it. Nice. But when it comes to painting, I had never tried it until I was, you know, a, a pastor friend of mine from Tallahassee. Mm-hmm. He had uh, posted on Facebook that they was going to put uh, a, a popular TV show host on TV on Twitch. Uh-huh. So I was like, well, let me check that out. And I did the next thing I knew, and I was painting. Very nice. And I loved it. It's the best way. You learn, and the best thing for for all artists is always to keep learning and always learn always from learn. other artists. Yeah, learn from other people. Other artists, most most other artists, they love to share their work with people and they love to teach. Yeah, YouTube videos like your like your uh, mm -hmm. your YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. You can get tons of ideas. You know? little, and, little tips and tricks for everybody. Yeah, and when you first start out, if you want to, you know, use someone else's reference as painting as a reference so you can learn, there's nothing wrong with that. No. I would change, a, you know, a little things here and there and make it your own. Sure. But there's nothing wrong with with that when, you've, uh -huh. when, you're, when you're learning. Of course not. That's how we all learn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't think... Michelangelo rolled out to bed one morning and said, hmm, I think I'm going to be a master painter today. <laughs> wouldn't that be nice, though? <laughs> yeah, wouldn't it be nice if we could just roll out to bed and say, hmm, I think today I'm going to be an Albert Bierstadt, so here we go. <laughs> All right, very good. Yeah, and then we'll just come over here to this other mountain and we'll just start putting it in. And is that the same color the other mountain, or are yeah, you changing it, it a little bit? They're all basically the same, but you can just... Add a little brown, add a little green, okay. just to change the so value. So you are changing it up a little bit? Just a little bit. All right, so I had my, my uh, brown sliding over a little bit, so I just kind of moved it. Yeah. So just the same same kind of darkness, but just... Yeah. Uh, it just breaks up the shapes of the mountains. Right. Now, okay. 
your, your audience at home, they can spend as much time as they want to on this. Mm -hmm. I would advise the more, the more time you spend on the canvas, the more you learn. Exactly. Yeah, and this is a good way to show how to get the depth yeah. from the, you the know, light in the back. I learned something very early on in my young painting career. You could go to every artist in the world and take lessons, mm -hmm. but if you don't take the time in front of the canvas and paint for yourself, you're never going to achieve what you could become. Exactly. It's just not going to happen. So my advice is anybody who wants, even if they have an inkling of a desire to paint, paint. Mm -hmm. Go buy you some paints, get you some brushes. You can start off with some cheap canvases. Michaels and Hobby Lobby sells them every day. Right. Start off with that. And these thing, are professional grade canvases. Yes, these are, oh, and I did say that these are from the Sun, uh, Sun Belt. Mr. Pat at Sun Belt Manufacturing. They're based out of Texas. Mr. Pat. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I don't recall if I mentioned that we did mix a medium for the sky. I, yeah, I we did. We, we did, did do did, that. Did we mention it? No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so we did mix some of the, uh, yeah. the clear gel medium mm -hmm. with some white titanium, and we did put it across the top just we to make did. that sky go on there a little Just to make it go looser. on a little bit more smoother. Yeah. I put that on my skies and in my water. And I can see we're switching back and forth. You can yep. see. We're switching over to the one inch landscape brush just so we can get this. Get this land on a little purposes. bit faster. We're going to get this land put in, yeah. That's right. We just want to give them the lesson on how to do this. Exactly, exactly. And, uh, they, can, they can play with this at home. And yeah, and I always them. suggest everybody watch the video, the whole video first. On uh, then, sure. then get your supplies out. This way, you can see which way you know the paintings are going. Yeah. The most important thing is, if you're not having fun painting, you need to pick a different hobby. That's right. It has to be fun. There will be moments of frustration, but if the moments of frustration outweigh your joy of painting, you need to. You may need to think about something else. Yeah. Oh, everybody, every artist gets frustrated a little oh, bit yeah. when we're trying. There was a famous artist, I can't remember his name, but I do remember uh, an Oops. artist friend of mine talking about him. He would get so frustrated with some of his paintings that he would throw them in the tree and leave them there. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I know I got frustrated a lot, but I just yeah. went out into my other mountain and I couldn't fix it, so I'm just covering it up with some dark there. Yeah. So you yep. have to, see, now I like how your mountain turned out. Oh, thank you. Like easy enough just to get it on there. Yeah, so then just you're just bringing on. this color down from the I'm sides. actually, at this point, I'm just going back and forth between all of these different colors. Okay. Because it gives variations in the mountain. And yeah, yeah. This way you have some little. Yeah, it may look like fall tree leaves or, you know, I don't know. Yeah. But Boy, you can do anything. Coming along real nice. Yeah. Very good. You can mix you, up, mix you up some red and yellow, a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow ochre, and put you some fall colors in this mountain, which I'll probably do if I have time. Very good. Okay. So you're just kind of putting these two mountains together then down here, yeah, right? I like see you're kind of rubbing them together. Valley. Yeah. And then you're using the number uh, number one scenery yep. brush. Scenery brush. We're and, just going to. And I'm just doing it with the filbert brush. Put going this back in and forth. real fast. Give some different indications of some things happening on the mountainside, maybe. And this has a tooth to it. It's a medium, medium, it's a medium canvas, grain. That's right. Medium yep. grain. It has some tooth to it. Has some teeth on it. Now, every once in a while, when, like if I was painting at home, I'd just take this white and put it down in here. Okay. So it gives like a little indication of maybe some mist. Oh. Okay, yeah. so that's kind of like between them? Between the mountains, because you know, you do want some separation between them. Okay, good idea. Have a little mist in and there. And then I'll take that same old landscape, number one, and I'll just fan all this out. Oh, that's I can. very good. Okay, I'm going to need a little more to separate there. Yep. A little mist coming in there. And that's exactly what that looks like is a little bit of mist. Mm hmm. Very good. And then we'll take some, actually, you know, I only use the uh, flat brush for this. Okay. We're going to take some yellow light, a little bit of green mixed in with that. Okay. So you have something similar to this. Okay, like a mid-tone green. Yeah, mid-tone green, a little bit of yellow ochre maybe. Okay, so yellow light, yellow, uh, the sap, sap green, green, a little yellow, yellow ochre. ochre. And we're just going to start, let me get that hair off of there. We're just going to start putting this grass in there. Okay. Actually, that's not going to, we'll use the uh, one inch landscape Go back brush. to the landscape brush, right? Yeah. Since it's a little bigger. Yeah, the, we don't really need the detail until we get the, f the foreground in. Okay. Or the back, the uh, underpainting in. 
once we get this underpainting in, then we can really take off with it. And if it's a little dry, can I, I can dip a little in this medium, right? You can Just use, use medium, a little. You can use the clear gel medium from yep. Gamlin. You can use paint thinner. A little tiny bit. Just a little bit to make the paint move a yeah, little Yeah, because I just put a little bit on. That seems to be going a little bit faster. Yeah, I just like, I really like gambling oil paints because to me they're butter smooth. Huh. They just move so, in my opinion, they just move so good on the canvas. Butter because smooth. He said it's butter smooth. I do love butter. Butter smooth. <laughs> when I'm painting at home, I'll use a little bit of thinner and the clear gel medium at uh -huh. times. And only experience is going to teach you when you need to do that. Exactly. Yep. Because everybody has a, their own style of painting. Everybody's painting paints differently than this person or oh, that person. Exactly. And my uh, my hand, my wrist is getting a, an exercise over here, getting yeah. all this on. <laughs> it'll it'll it'll, uh, it'll most certainly give you a workout. And we are using a 16 by 20 canvas today. Yep, 16 by 20. This way, it's plenty big, so everybody can really see. I generally paint on an 18 by 24, only oh. because I like the size of it. So you like the the big canvases? I like the Good. bigger canvas, but I paint now, on all sizes. I, I don't want to give any false illusions here. You know, we have a time frame we're trying to teach people techniques and different ways of doing things within this time frame but uh -huh. at home it'll take me two or three days really sometimes Did longer to finish a painting oh yeah. really yeah. okay now i know usually um you know i i'm a pet portraitist and i um my They're pets beautiful by the way thank you my pets are what what take me a long time landscapes i'm i'm pretty quick yeah well it all depends on the detail yes how much detail back do you want to put in that painting exactly and I'm, I, I'm what I call a detailist. I love the details. That's very good. That's and what I'll makes spend, a painting. I'll spend two or three days on one landscape. Sometimes sometimes I'll spend four hours just on a sky. Wow. To put the sky in, yeah. Because, well, you have a lot of patience. <laughs> yeah. Well. So what I'm doing is I'm just dipping back and forth between the yellow ochre and the sap green yeah, and the yellow. Yeah, we're just putting what looks like grass in. And just getting, getting it in yeah. there. Yeah. It doesn't have to be in any particular order. No, nope. grass isn't in any particular order unless it's on a golf course. That's right. <laughs> they maintain that grass with thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Uh huh. But if you walk out in nature, they're all over the place. Yeah, got all kinds of colors in there. I like how you have more yellow ochre in there, so I'm going to copy off of you. Yeah. And I'm going to go back and put more yellow ochre. Yeah, we're going to put some red in here in just a second. I like the way that yellow ochre looks. The yellow ochre is kind of a, a mustardy color, I yeah. guess you can say. Now, well, well, in Florida, especially during the wintertime, grass is brown. It's not green. Oh. So we're just going to take our number 10 flat brush, and we're going to work this up a little bit to get in some of that mountain. Oh, kind of. Get the white covered up. Okay. Yeah. And we, uh, we have about 10 more minutes to finish, so. Um, we're moving along. Yeah, yeah, we could. We're going to uh, take some brown and some black. Okay, brown and, and black. We're throw us in a tree. And we're back on the filbert brush we're again. We're back on the filbert okay, brush. Okay, brown and, we're and black. We're going to throw it in right about here. Brown and black. Yeah, just a nice big tree looking over the mountain. A little tree limb coming out right about okay. there. A little tree limb over here. All right. Making it look. As nice as we and can. It's, it, and I like the way that you do your trees. You draw it out first, then you paint it in. Yeah, See, now the way I in. do it is I just, I push it in like this, and I, that's just how I yeah, do it. Yeah, everybody's and different. Everybody, whichever is easier, and whatever whichever you feel more comfortable. Whatever works for that person who's painting, that's exactly. right. Exactly, whichever you feel more comfortable. The main thing is to encourage people to paint. Yes, just to start. Pick up the brush and get started. Pick up the paint brush and get started. Exactly. Now, is this tree... Who cares what it looks like? <laughs> that's right. You You'll get just better start as you get as the more time you spend on the canvas. Of course. Now, is this tree going off the top of the canvas, or just kind of kind of It is kind of going off, but you're not going to be able to see it because we're going to have tree limbs and leaves, and okay. I'm a tree guy. I like trees. So I'm not going to be bringing this trunk all the way up off then? No, it's no, no, no. It's going to stay right here? No, no, yeah, it can stay right about there. Right about here? Okay. Yeah. And this way I know what to... Yeah. Where we're going with that. Very good. And you yeah. already put in a little bit of a secondary branch there. Yeah, just it's just an indication. Keep me straight. Know where I want to go with the painting. And okay. It, anytime I paint, I always put in a sketch. Oh, okay. Always. I don't like to f f what I call free mind any painting because <laughs> it, it needs structure. You need to be able to know mm -hmm. where you want to go with your painting. And I do sometimes. Sometimes I don't. It just right. depends. Well, I'm, everybody's different. I'm known for winging it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say, winging it. And I know yeah. Janet Jackson, who's also been a guest on my past show, hates when I say winging it. 
she's like, please don't wing it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not much of a winging it type person either. I like to I like to plan out my paintings, and, but everybody's different. If we uh -huh. all painted the same, what a boring world. Yeah, that's right. And we're just going to blend this out a blend little bit. Blend this out a little with the yeah. two inch brush. Yeah. Aren't these uh, Wilson Bigfoot brushes much, nice, huh? Yeah, they are. I like these brushes. You can pretty much use any brush, just as long as you make the grass go up the tree kind of. Now, right. we basically can put in the tree leaves with, um, I like to use a detail round brush because it gives me more control. Okay. You can use yellow just straight out of the tube. Okay. And you just come up here and you just flick on these little. So straight yellow, not straight yellow ochre then? Straight yellow, no, no, no. Yellow ochre is more of a golden sunset so you, we, color. So we should use a yellow. Yeah, and okay. because it's going to turn a little green, but there's green in tree leaves That's anyway. That's right, okay. So we're just going to... Starting to dab it on a little bit yeah, up here. Yeah, just leave your, leave your sky showing sky, through. Sky, okay. Yeah, because if you come up here and you just paint a full thick green tree, it right, might we're not look see decent, anything. but you're not going to see any depth in it. Exactly. Okay. And then you, this is our backlit tree leaves, sort of. Okay. If we had more time, we could really, really make it look detailed. Of course. But at least we're getting the but lesson. But we're getting the idea. And yeah. I love the way this purplish, purplish color, you see blue That and really purple. turned out good. And I'm, the, I'm, the mountains in the front. Yeah, and that's what you we're trying a, to teach, right? You did a great job on that. Good, thanks. And then we just go back in with green. With just some sap green. Just some sap green. And just kind of... Yep. Swish now, it and home, move it around. At home, when you have the time, because this is a wet on wet canvas and a wet on wet technique, uh -huh. when you start painting your leaves, if you come in here like this and you just start working it back, it'll automatically fade to a different color. Right. In other so words, you you're letting the paint run off your yeah. brush before you go on to yeah. get more paint. Yeah. So you will actually have three or four different values in that tree. Right. Very good. Just by letting your paintbrush run out of paint, mm -hmm. and that green will mix with that yellow, and then you can come in with some black, and you can give some depth, and just various different things like that. And then the shape of this tree is however you want to make it. Okay. You know, Very good. I basically might. I'm just going to show you for time restraint. Yes, yes. My tree comes out like this. You got tree leaves over here. There's a hole here, uh -huh. and then more little tree leaves and limbs and. Basic stuff like that. Just make a pretty tree. And this tree trunk will be covered up into your leaves. Oh, I see. So, so then, in other words, this is not even going to be showing after yeah, you're Yeah, no, you're done. not even going to see that, that. So you would be putting on so many, um, so much greenery that, that this won't be showing No, you here. won't see that I at see all. I see what you mean. And then, you know, you come in with some brown and some white. Uh-huh, I get you. Because if I put this in real thick like this, then I'd be covering that whole thing up. Yeah, and then you just... Work up the side of your tree okay. for highlights. So now we're on the fan brush. Fan brush, number number three. Yep. I usually use a number six or number four, but you come up this okay. way, and the more you work this paint, the thinner it'll get. And it'll look more realistic. Right. So this is going to be like the... Very light touch. And this is the, the bark yep. showing of the this tree. This is the bark. Very good. And then if you want to cool that down and give a shadow color, you just go in with some blue, some white, and you give it a shadow color. I see. Shadow colors on trees gives more of a rounded illusion. Right, make it look a little rounder. Yeah. Okay, and that goes right out into that grass down there. It sure does. And then to add a little color into the painting, you can mix up some red, some yellow, and you can just come in here and just... Oh, so now you're just using your flat brush. Yeah, with just some a red. flat brush. You said red and some yellow. Red and yellow give little tints of Ooh, that, color. I got to get used to that red. Yep. Tints oh, of color I see. And so some you're grass. just kind of yeah, putting a little. You can also use it. I'm just, I'm skipping around here. Yeah, that's okay. No, making, no, that's I'm fine. Skipping. That's fine. Just to, we just want to get the lesson out to show everybody <sighs> to what you grass, can do. It's real simple. You can take this and you just scoot up like this to make grass. I like that you said scoot up. Scoot it up. Scoot <laughs> it up like you're trying to pick up something off the canvas. That's not showing up very well, but we'll I see. take some green. That's I'll show you with life. some green. And just okay. scoot up the grass like that. Gotcha. And you can make grass. And you can change the values of that grass to give it depth. You can go in with some little mm -hmm. bit of green, a little bit of yellow ochre, kind okay. of make some grass. So we can and you come do up that here all and... across the foreground. I see. So just kind of. I just anchored the tree in there. Yeah, you anchor your tree into your paint. And then here and there, you're saying you can put here some of this grass yeah, or in. Or you can make grass like this. You can just come down and. Okay, so this is just a couple different variations Very of grasses in there. Very variations of grass, yeah. Very good. 
You learn all this by playing. Yeah. Look at a, look at a brush you've never used before and go, yeah. what can I do with that brush? Very Let me see good. What, I, what effects I can make with that brush. Very nice. Darks and lights and Darks that's what and really makes it. And maybe even a little bit of back black in your in your corners. And this would be uh, easy to make into a, a nice winter scene too by laying oh, yeah. some, you can lay some, snow. some snow on those mountains and all. Yeah, you can do whatever you want to do. Yep. It's your painting. I think I'm going to go back to the, uh, the let's see, the um, top of the tree there a little bit. I want to get a little bit more of the uh, greenery in. So I'm, I came back to the, uh, yep. oh, I forgot, isn't that funny? I'm like saying, what the heck brush is this one? The filbert uh, brush. <laughs> filbert brush. Well, the filbert brush is really good for this too. Yeah. It's just, I, the more detail I can get out of a brush, the more I'll use that brush. Yep, Because I'm nice. a detail type person. I love details. And I'm just kind of patting it on there with the sap yeah, green. Yeah, you, you, you tap it on with a little bit of comma stroke. And, and I, I like the idea of co covering this, um, the top of this. And you know, making this a thick, a thick greenery in here. Yeah, it'll be thick, but you still want to leave a little bit of light showing. Yep. So this way we don't see the top of that. I'm bringing it right down into the mountain, so it looks like the mountain is behind it. Once we put something in front of it, right, make it look like it's behind it. So we just have a couple more minutes. If there's anything else you wanted to add onto this? Oh yeah, you sure could. Um, to give your trees. Uh, your mountains a little more detail. This is what this is what I would do if I was still painting the mountain. You can just come right up here and flick up some little trees. Oh, okay. Indication of trees in the background. And you're using like some sap green. Yeah. And... Well, I would use the original mountain color. Oh, the I mountain was, color. Yeah. Okay. If I was taking my time, this is what I would do. I see. The mountain color just to. Yeah, just I to see. give you some indication of some little tree tops sticking oh, up in the back. Oh, just to pull them up a little bit. Yeah, a little bit just of detail. pull them up. A little bit of detail, and you can just come down here and kind of rough it in a little. Yeah, rough it in. Would you some. Get some darks in there. Yeah, get you some darks. I got a little green in there, but I think that's okay. Make it a little more, kind of like a smoky mountain type mountain. They have a lot of greens, a lot of colors, a lot of earth tones. Nice. A lot of oranges and yeah, different very things nice. like that. But this gives you the basic idea of, I really want people to learn the different techniques and what you can do with these brushes. Yes. That's what. That's what matters. And, and these you can are make nice. the most stunning grass with a fan brush. It's unreal. Yeah, I like how we could just push it up just like this. And Wilson does this a lot up. in his paintings too. Yeah, and it's you can push it up. You can, you can even use just one corner of it and go way high and make really long vertical grass. It's amazing all the stuff you can well, do with a fan brush. Well, I'm going to wrap it up now. And Kyle, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for thank having Thank you me. for tuning in. Um, please come take a peek at our Facebook pages and see our work. And I appreciate you coming from Florida. Thank you for having me. Giving me it's this wonderful pleasure. lesson today. Thank you.